Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well and ready for today's video. Now, I've spoken about this a couple of years back in an old video, but I wanted to do a more updated version with a better explanation. Now, I've always wondered what exactly Hermione Granger did when it came to altering her parents' memories. There's been so many different versions and opinions given on the situation, and the movie didn't exactly make things easier by going way off canon. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving a detailed explanation of everything that really happened with Hermione and her parents, why and how the movie got it wrong, and by the video's end, we'll have everything cleared up and well established. Also, if you'd like to ask me any questions, you can do so by contacting me through Instagram. With that being said, if this is the topic for you, then please keep watching, stick around, and most importantly, enjoy. Okay everyone, let's get this video started. With the second Wizarding War all but at its peak for casualties and disappearances, Voldemort and his Death Eaters were doing everything possible to hunt down and capture Harry Potter and all his known associates. When I say everything possible, I mean it. There's no lens that the Dark Lord would not go to in order to get his hands on Harry Potter, and that includes his family. In fact, even though getting Harry was his number one priority, he'd have taken great satisfaction and pleasure from hurting anyone close to the boy, including the family of Harry's friends. Even the Dursleys had to leave their home that they've lived in for over 20 years due to the imminent threat of the Death Eaters who would have gladly tortured, then killed each of them. For Hermione Granger, it was no different. She was known to be a close associate and friend of Harry's, most likely from Draco Malfoy's information, meaning she and anyone close to her were now at risk, including her muggle parents, who would both be highly desired targets due to their blood status and the fact that their deaths would devastate Hermione and possibly fracture her friendship with Harry. For those reasons, Hermione had to take action. Although her parents were most definitely aware of what was going on, they were not safe, even in the Muggle world. They were growing increasingly concerned for Hermione's safety, never mind their own, which is part of, if not the entire reason behind Hermione altering their memories in the first place. She did not want them entering uncharted territory looking for her. Even if they had promised her they would remain away, their parents, it's only natural for them to want to protect their child. However, this is on a scale far beyond anything that can actually see the Grangers become effective. So Hermione decided to alter their memories, and here's where it actually gets difficult, because the movie just went and messed it all up entirely. In the movie, Hermione enters the room when her parents are unaware and uses the incantation, Obliviate. Now, Obliviate is a permanent memory loss charm. It cannot be reversed and is normally used for muggles who have witnessed wizards performing magic. It was heavily used in the first Fantastic Beasts movie and unfittingly used in conversation. Did you Obliviate the witnesses? Just felt like such a forced sentence. Anyway, let's continue. So the movie's version is Hermione permanently erasing her parents' memories because, as usual with Harry Potter on-screen adaptions, the powers that be, those people in charge, don't research the spells enough to actually give a crap about what it means to spend a little bit of extra time on something in order to actually get it right and get it accurate. Just take a look at Lucius Malfoy about to utter a Vada Kedavra on Harry in the Chamber of Secrets. The Killing Curse, something which made absolutely no sense and could have been reshot, but if we still have the books. Thank God for the books. So let's look at what actually happened. Hermione didn't erase her parents' memories, nor did she use any sort of memory erasing charm on them. That didn't happen. We know this because she said she had never performed a memory charm up until she did it on Dolohov and Rowell on Tottenham Court Road. So that was the first time she'd done it, and trust Hermione to get it perfect too. So what spell did she actually use on her parents? 
JK Rowling revealed that Hermione used a false identity charm on her parents which acted as a sort of blanket to cover their original thoughts and memories. The charm could be easily reversed when the cast are seen fit to do so and did not wear off until then either. She had used the charm to give them new identities with new ambitions. Mr and Mrs Granger now became Wendell and Monica Wilkins, a childless couple who after many years of living in Britain now desired a change of scenery, a change of country and a change of continent. Hermione had bewitched them into believing it was their life's ambition to move to Australia to set up a new life away from the dull skies of Britain. And it worked with ease. The Wilkins packed up their things, sold their assets and moved to the land down under, sunny Australia and remained there for the latter part of the war, never knowing who they truly were. Never knowing that their daughter was bravely fighting in a war that could most likely see her lose her life. It deeply upset Hermione at the thought of never seeing her parents again and the lengths she had to go to in order to protect them, but the alternative was a lot worse. The Death Eaters would have tortured the Grangers beyond any measurable doubt and their deaths would all be but a certainty. Sometimes an emotional blow can be a lot more wounding than a physical one and I feel that would certainly be the case with Hermione. It's not all doom and gloom though. Things have a happy ending for the Grangers. When the war was over and it was safe to do so, Hermione travelled to Australia to retrieve her parents. She subsequently lifted the false identity charm and it was as if the Grangers had never been gone at all. The only remaining obstacle was explaining to them that the war was actually over, that Voldemort was dead, there was no more threat, as their most recent memories would have been when the war was at its peak. In saying that, it's not exactly known how much Hermione actually told them about what was going on. Knowing her, she'd have most likely played it down. Now, it may have been some adjustment for her parents to settle back into their lives in Great Britain. They'd been in Australia for so long and even though the false identity charm was removed, they still would have had some memories or even flashbacks of their time in Australia which Hermione would then have to explain. So personally for me, I don't think it would have been a case of pretend it never happened, it never existed. There is the option of using the Oblivier charm to erase those memories. But I can't see her doing that either as she's already done enough to her parents heads as it is. The reality is, is that she would have had to come clean and I can't see Mr and Mrs Granger being too happy about it either. It's quite an invasive act but something that their daughter had to do in order to protect them. In all honesty, I think it's a situation that they would have gotten over eventually but there was a lot more to it than many people think. How do you think your parents would feel or react knowing you erased their memories for the better part of a war? Anyway guys with that being said that is my full detailed explanation on what spell Hermione used on her parents and what went on with the situation during the war. It wasn't a memory charm it was a false identity charm. If there's anything you'd like to add then please do so in the comment section below and tell me if you've also noticed how wrong the movie got it to. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever. So please, if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.